Hi, this is my integrated video essay for my MAN 6254 Organizational Behavior presentation. My name is Raymond Clemens. I'm originally from Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, I currently live in Miami, Florida. I've been here for about six years now. Um, my career goal is to advance in the field of supply management and logistics. Um, I served for 11 years active duty in the Army in that field, so that led me to into a civilian career as well in the Army doing supply and logistics management. According to the Strengths Finder exercise, my five top strengths were Achiever, Relator, Harmony, Competition, and Deliberative. Uh, my two personal uh, strengths out of those would be Achiever and Relator because I love to teach, I love to share knowledge and make people better in the organization, and I am pretty high achieving, always trying to be the best at whatever I do. I intend to build on my strengths by working on tasks that are challenging and bringing out the best in me by mentoring, teaching, and counseling my colleagues and anybody who needs help in my organization. I also want to take more time to spend with my family and friends and live a more balanced lifestyle in order to be more effective at work and be more satisfied when I'm not working. In the Army, my responsibilities and duties have a lot of impact on the readiness of soldiers. They have to have equipment which gives them the capability to successfully accomplish their missions, whether they're simulated training events or in the real world missions. Uh, in my career, I have had experience working overseas in Europe, Africa, the Middle East, and I had to adapt to a lot of different countries, a lot of different cultures, organizations, people, and from many, many diverse backgrounds. Additionally, I kind of like working in that environment because it gives you a responsibility to coordinate multiple tasks and to support organizational functions that are eventually going to lead to soldiers accomplishing their mission. Uh, I had to support with different materials, ammunition, repair parts, subsistence, sundries, petroleum products on a large scale. So I'm used to that challenge and I'm driven by the satisfaction that our soldiers are always going to have everything they need to complete their mission safely and successfully because of our mission as support personnel. <clears throat> In my background, I have attended many leadership courses, primary and advanced. I also went to a few Army logistics schools, which gives me good experience in my field. I also have the White Belt Lean Six Sigma, and I have deployed to different zones for the war and uh, peacekeeping missions. Of my skills, I think that I have worked with people from many different backgrounds, many different cultures, ethnicities, age groups, and genders, which gives me a chance to be exposed to a lot of different organizational behaviors, which is the focus of this class. And I also worked overseas. I've been deployed, had to work in very harsh environments, uh, I was a leader for almost my entire career, so I always want to be the best and draw the best out of people by motivating them and teaching and counseling. My personal deficiencies, I think it would be patience. Uh, I tend to jump on things as soon as tasks come up. I don't like to wait, and uh, I don't like people that procrastinate or don't plan or think ahead, so that's one of my deficiencies that I need to work on and improve on. As far as my values go, I believe I'm very selective when choosing to share with personnel at work or professional relationships. In my organization, for example, there are a few people that I work with very closely in and outside of work, and when we're together, we have a task to accomplish. doesn't matter what it is, we can get it done. I trust them explicitly. And it's important to have trust in our organization because unlike most organizations, uh, people die when we don't do our job well. I also pride myself on being extremely reliable. People know they can count on me, and I like to know that I can count on them. Uh, whether it's a part of my job or is a part of my personal life, I always want to do the best to support the overall effectiveness of our organization. Uh, I expect people to pull their weight, too. I want them to do their job just as much as I do my job. And if they do need help, not to wait till the situation is out of control to ask for that help. 
Also, I like to take responsibility for my actions, and I think people should do the same. And they shouldn't have to blame others for their mistakes or shortcomings. Have the intestinal fortitude you to stand up for your work. Another one of my real pet peeves are to treat everybody's needs just like it was yours. If you have paperwork that someone brings into you, then you should treat it like it's yours. Treat it with a sense of urgency because everyone's important and you should treat them that way. Out of this class, some of the most valuable concepts I got were a combination of different types of motivation. I think that the two-factor or motivation hygiene theory, because of its job security, steady pay, good working conditions, and solid leadership, that was a very critical part of motivation that could be used to be effective. In addition, in addition the cognitive evaluation theory, because of the intrinsic rewards, especially in the military, being a soldier, being a cadet, being an officer or an army civilian, you enjoy supporting soldiers because that's what you do. You train, we train officers to be future leaders and we don't really look at the monetary value. A lot of time we work in unfavorable working conditions and we have very crazy schedules but soldiers keep doing their jobs regardless. They stay motivated and have to spend ex ex extended time away from their families, their friends, and they don't receive reward that most people would for that. Okay, They receive rewards, for example, seeing a school being built in the middle of the desert. And supervisors work alongside them, which is a very big motivational factor when they see their leaders can do the same things they can. I believe that in most cases, these are critical motivation factors and overall job satisfaction of making a difference rather than just going to war, which is something you just see in the news. You don't get to see what soldiers really do. As far as team leadership goes, I think the transformational leadership is the most effective method. Army leaders have to instill pride, gain respect and trust of their, all their members. And communication is very key. Uh, taking complex orders, breaking them down into simple instructions for the lowest level uh, for people to understand is critical to our mission success. Uh, critical thinking, adapting to change, and problem solving are all tools that we need to use as leaders to be effective. And because of our cur current operating environment, this has become even more critical. In addition, we work not only with soldiers, but Army con. Uh, army civilians, we work with contractors, we work with regular civilians, and dealing with each group, you have to take a different approach, although you have to treat them all equally. Uh, soldiers especially require individual attention because of their diverse background and personal situations. So flexibility is a crucial factor in army leadership because of the high turnover of personnel, situ situational awareness, and operating environment. Leadership must be able to adapt and successfully overcome many different variables in our organization. As far as overcoming change, the first step in our organization is selecting members that can accept change. Uh, we have a lot of complex operating environments, diverse personnel, and we operate in many different locations. Cultures may be different, and we have to be able to interact and integrate ourselves with those locations in order to be successful. Uh, our people have to be open-minded, they have to have a positive attitude, and they have to willingly embrace the experience of being in the Army. Communication and implementing change fairly helps us to show that the organization is considerate of the needs and feelings of the members. It helps them to understand why changes are being made, and this takes away the uncertainty, eliminates rumors, and gives everyone a sense of, of why it's so important for this change to take place. And this shows how to impact them as individuals and impact the organization as a whole. For example, right now, there's a big case going on with Don't Ask, Don't Tell for the military. And this is a serious debate. And in order for this to successfully be integrated into the Army, it's going to take a lot of change. It's going to take a lot of open-mindedness and eventually the leaders are going to have to present it in such a way where every member is going to understand what it means and how they're going to react to it is going to be a great example of change in the army thank you and goodbye